Welcome to the Mod 8 Digital Notebook Lesson 2. So if you need the digital notebook, I'll be sure and put a link down in the description so you can download a copy. If you need Lesson 1 for this digital notebook, it's going to be linked there on slide number 2. So when you go to slide number 2, you can click right there for the video for Lesson 1. But today, this video is for Lesson 2. So let's jump in to our digital notebook and lesson two begins on slide number eight here but also we want to just go ahead and go to slide number nine now one of the best ways to use this video and um this digital notebook is just to press pause see how many of these you know and that you can put in the right location so that you know what these words and phrases if at any point during the video the lesson, you want to pause the video, go try it on your own. I think that's a great idea. You could always then just press play and see how you did with the video. So let's jump into these. Okay, so number one, Pythagorean theorems only work with right triangles. So hopefully you drug that one into the right spot. A right triangle has one right angle. That is correct. Only one right angle. And so a right angle is 90 degrees. So we'll put that in for number two number three the formula for finding the length of the hypotenuse is to find the hypotenuse we use this one a to the second plus b to the second equals c to the second you may have heard it before as a squared plus b squared equals c squared number four the formula for missing finding a missing leg is a version of that same formula but we just turn it around to find a leg. So that is a to the second equals c squared minus b squared. Number five, the opposite of squaring a number is finding the square root. We're gonna do some of that today in our calculations. The hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. And when you square the legs and add them together, they will equal the square of the hypotenuse. That's just saying the Pythagorean theorem in words. All right, so how'd you do with the vocabulary? It's okay if you missed a few of them. You just want to make sure that you now have them correct so that when you're studying, when you're using them, you're using the correct terminology. You understand what's being asked. So let's jump to slide number 10 then. This is a right triangle, and we want to make sure we understand what each part of the right triangle is. So the first thing I think is important is the right angle. This is the perfect corner. It's like a, that's how I describe it to younger students. The right angle is, makes that perfect corner there. And the hypotenuse is opposite of that perfect corner. And so I'm going to draw that, move that blue line and label this as the hypotenuse. Now, in our formula, that was what we're going to substitute in for C. Now, each of the other sides then are called a leg. And you can let either one be A and or B. It doesn't matter which one you say is A or which one you say is B. As long as C is the hypotenuse, you'll be fine. Let's go on to slide 11 then. On slide 11, we are looking to actually kind of develop the concept of the Pythagorean theorem. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these squares and I'm going to line them up on the outside of the triangle. So I want you to see that this square lines up right here with that side of the triangle. Now remember, that side of the triangle was 3. And so the area of this square would be 3 times 3 or 9. Let me do the same for this other side. You see that leg is four. Now, if I put this square up there on that side of the triangle, then its area would be 16. 
One more to go. And I'm gonna put this purple triangle here. And this is my area of 25 since that leg of the triangle was five. And what I want you to see is that in order to find these areas, we actually did three times three. Well, that's the same thing as three to the second. We wanted to do four times four, which is four to the second. So when we take the A to the second in our Pythagorean theorem, plus the B to the second, we do get our C to the second here. All right, let's keep going. We're gonna go on to slide number 13 here. Slide number 13, we're gonna actually set up to find our Pythagorean theorem, our missing side of C here. So I'm gonna type my steps here. I notice that the legs are 10 and 12. So I know A is gonna be 10 and B is gonna be 12. And I don't know what C is. Well, let's put them in our Pythagorean theorem. And by the way, I'm going to just use these little carrots. I'm just doing shift six. Makes it a little easier for me to type them. If you want to highlight them and do superscript, you can do that. So let me put in my values now. In place of A, I'll put 10. So 10 to the second plus B is 12 to the second. And that gives me equals C to the second. Now, 10 to the second, you can do in a calculator, it's 10 times 10, which is 100. 12 to the second, 12 times 12, 144, and that gives me C to the second. If we add those together, 100 plus 144 is 244. And friends, this is where we have to go to our calculator to do our square root. So let's switch over to our Desmos calculator so that we can do our square root. All right, if you need that Desmos calculator, I'll be sure and link it below. But friends, in order to do a square root in the Desmos calculator, you're just gonna type SQRT, and you notice that it changed it to a square root symbol. Then you can type your number, 244, and I want you to see I got 15.6 there. So that's what I'm gonna use as my C value. So I get 15.6, equals my hypotenuse. Pretty simple if you use your Desmos calculator to help you with those square roots. Let's do another one. We'll go on to slide 14. I want you to see in this one that we are trying to find side B. So let's do our steps the same way. So I've got A is going to be the leg, which is five. B, I don't know. And C is 13. So again, I'm gonna use those little carrots to help me type my Pythagorean theorem. And let's substitute our values. So I've got five to the second plus B to the second equals 13 to the second. Okay, let's substitute our values. Five to the second is five times five or 25 plus B to the second equals 13 to the second, which is 169. Now, right here, this is where we need to get the b to the second by itself. So I'm going to subtract 25 from both sides of the equation. It gives me b to the second equals 144. Now, when I take the square root of 144, again, with my Desmos graphing calculator, I'm just going to type that sqrt. I'm going to put in my 144, and you see that I get 12. So that tells me that my leg is 12. And we can be a little bit more specific by putting the meters there. Since 5 had 5 meters and 13 was 13 meters, we know that 12 also is going to be 13 or 12 meters. So that's an example of how to find a hypotenuse. We did that first and then a leg. All right, friends, you're doing great. Let's keep going with slide 15. Now, this one is one where you're going to want to just, these are good practice questions. So you'll want to pause the video right now, do your work, and then come back and check your answers. So now is the best time to go ahead and pause and then check your answers by pressing play.
All right, so go ahead and check your answers here. See how you did. These were great opportunities for you to practice. We had two of them where you had to find the hypotenuse and one of them where you had to find the leg. So I hope that helps you with those. Let's look at one last slide for this lesson piece. And this is slide number 16. So in this one, we have made an error in both of these problems. So what I want you to do is to go ahead and press pause and see if you can identify the answer. Then once you identify, I'm sorry, identify the area. And once you, I want you to take a moment to see if you can find, identify the error. Once you've identified the error, then I want you to see if you can find the correct answer here. So go ahead and press pause, see if you can find the error in what the teacher did here, and then find the correct answer. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you were able to find the two errors. On error number one, the teacher did not take the square root. On the very last step, we needed to take the square root of 208 in order to find the answer. And so the answer for the hypotenuse actually should have been 14.4. On problem number two, the teacher actually did the problem correct, except when they went to go do the square root. Let me show you what Desmos says that square root should be. So the square root of 17 should be 10.8. And so that is a rounding error here. And the answer should be 10.8. So I hope this helps you, friends, with lesson two here in the Mod 8 Digital Notebook. Don't forget to continue on to lesson three when we will be going over the project for this module. And let me know if you have any questions down below. Bye for now.